Residents of Riot City, that was a hellacious key to the city 2018. I'm Sean Fuster. We're here to recap the event. I'm joined by the icon, Rocky Monero. What's up, Sean? How you doing? Thanks for joining me. And we were supposed to be joined by the difference, Tyler Daniels, as well. But after that ladder match, I don't think we'll be seeing much of anybody out of that match for a while. It was absolutely incredible. There's a reason why I don't do those sorts of matches, but those things are brutal. There's a reason I stay on this side of the microphone. So I guess we'll get on with recapping the first... Tyler Daniels. You think a little match like that's going to stop Tyler Daniels from making an appearance? You've uh, got a little... Um, a little what, Sean? On with the first match. Our night started with Katie Trey taking on Tony Toro in a clash between former tag team partners. It was a good, it was a good bout. It was a hell of a match, you know, and like, I, I love the fight out of Tony Toro. He's been, you know, he's really stepped up and got a lot of fire behind him, but you know, Caddy's got a bag full of tricks, man. And he, he pulled them out tonight and got the win. Caddy, of course, coming off a big win against you, Tyler Daniels. It's a little bit too much for me to say that Tony Toro perhaps was a little cheeky in this one, and that's why yeah, Caddy Trey got the win. No, not at all. I'll agree with whatever you want me to agree with right now. Uh, moving on, our second match, James Cray of the Millennials took on Marvel from the Rude Ones. And this was also a grudge match because we saw the Millennials take the tag team belts from the Rude Ones last month. We did indeed, Sean, and it's, you know, it's never a small thing when tag belts change hands. And uh, I understand that, you know, being English, that uh, James Cray enjoyed crickets. Wasn't sure he was looking for those from the crowd, though. Ooh. It was a very technical match between the two men. And Marvel, of course, one of the most dangerous competitors that you can square off against in Australia. He's a, he's a, he's a technical Marvel, that's hence the name. But he's a, he's a great uh, opponent, but he's, he's been doing tags too long. So I think the one-on-one -on -one thing sort of, uh, he may have been leaning towards the tag partner, wasn't there, and you know, unfortunately, he got the, uh, the big L tonight. That's right, the first win for the Millennials of the night. And speaking of tag team action, we expected to see... Would we call it a tag team, Sean? No, that's right. We expected to see Davey Green team with his mentor, Chris Basso, against the Armstrongs, but only three of those four men showed up, Rocky Minute. Well, we've got to find out what happened to Davey Green to start with. But, you know, all props go to, to Chris Basso. He, he will never back down from a challenge. I know this personally, and you know, I'm very impressed with him stepping up and taking on uh, two of the best brothers in, in the industry. To see one man take on two, Tyler Daniels, extreme effort from Chris Basso, but no small amount of fight on the part of the Armstrong. Oh, look, the Armstrong's probably got strong arms tonight, if you like, by a guy who truly is world class. And of course, we saw that bizarre moment where Nick's chick got involved in the match, and uh, we learned a little more about the brotherly bond between the Armstrongs than perhaps we really would like to know. That crossed a few lines, and I'm pretty sure in a few states you just can't do that sort of thing, Sean. I'm pretty sure it's fine in Canberra, but I wouldn't try it anywhere else. Now, Mr. Monero, you opened your challenge to Australia. You said you wanted to compete against the best of the best, and tonight you came up against PCW's former national champion, relentless Mark Cage. Hey, the, the kids show me a lot. You know, like I've obviously I've been doing this for a long time. You know, and I'm, I call myself the icon, and I think I proved it tonight. But that kid has a hell of a future in front of him today. He hit me with some of the hardest forearms and some of the toughest shots, I've, and one of the toughest matches I've, I've had in my 17 years. But you know, props to the kid. But you know, if you're gonna try to take on the icon. You need to give a little bit more than that. Tyler Daniels open challenge issued. Well, he claims to want the best in Australia, Rocky Monero. We'll see about that. Rocky and I have known each other for a very, very long time, and uh, I think both of us have got a bit of an ego and perhaps consider us ourselves maybe the best around. But between me and Tyler, there doesn't seem to be too much difference. Oh, tension here at the RCW wrap-up show. Our next match was a tag team match as we saw Grimm and Big Brody Marshall team up for the first time to take on the RCW Tag Team Champions, the Millennials. Well, it just goes to prove, Sean, that you know, once upon a time, if you were savage, maybe you're not always a gentleman. Mm. Rocky. Well, yeah, sometimes, you know, the, the bigger you are, sometimes the harder you can fall. You know, and like, yeah, they've got the, both got the size, they've both got the power, but you know, there's, 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 there's a reason why tag teams, you know, stay together for a long time. They develop continuity and stuff. It's their first outing. They didn't get the win, but you know, I can only see good things from, from those two big boys going together. And I think a special mention has to go out here to James Cray, who was very much the equaliser in that match and paid for it. 
couldn't have uh, thought of a better way for James Craig to end his evening. Simple as that. And in our massive six-man ladder match, we thought we were going to see a certain group of competitors, but instead, a special entrant by the name of Hammer. Special entrant, sure. You know, I heard uh, Rocky Monero here talk earlier that he doesn't do these matches because of how dangerous they can be and, and so are some of the bumps and the bruises that you end up taking from these. The last thing you want is a, a, you know, a personnel change at the last minute. That throws everything. You go into these matches trying to do whatever you can to understand the psychology of what you need to do, who you need to be in there. The last thing you need is someone like a hammer come out there and, and toughy give away his spot. Just wasn't for cricket. We saw Gabriel Eros taking incredible dives off those ladders. We saw Zach Sabbath using them as weapons. Bulldog. We saw the skyscraper Kurt Barron. We even saw Jimmy C get up on one of those ladders. And the good thing is we saw Jimmy C fall off one of those ladders. But the, the question I've got to ask is, uh, my man Tyler here, he was in that matchup. How'd you go, mate? I fared very well, thank you, Mr. Monero. Did, did you, do you have kids here? Did you win? I've had the key to the city, yes. Well, you know, there's a lot of hads going on, you know, and like that leads into, you know, I used to be good. So, maybe you're saying you're somewhat of a has-been now. You see, Rocky, maybe a has-been's better than a never was. For someone who claims they don't want to take the bumps and don't want to do those sorts of matches, it's a big call to then have a go at someone who puts themselves on the line. Well, my friend, the difference is that I'm a former Wright City Wrestling Champion, and you're not. What are you talking about? And that's supposed to be some sort of iconic statement now, is it? We'll definitely see. Residents, thank you very much for joining us for one of the fieriest wrap-up shows we've ever had. We will see you next month at Super Clash.